two decks down the length of the plane and carrying over 650 passengers. This 1990s proposed version of the Boeing 747X would not only be the biggest passenger aircraft flying in the sky, but it would crush the efforts by Airbus to build their own double-decker jet forever. But the Boeing 747X would never actually be built. With its legend powering rumours about the next Boeing very large aeroplane for generations to come. In today's video, we will look over what the new large aeroplane was, the other concepts that Boeing considered, and why it was never built. Boeing had dreamed of building a pure double-deck aircraft as far back as 1965 when designing the first Boeing 747. Designers at the time repeatedly ran into issues such as where to place exits, how to service the plane with 1970s airports, and even how to load the bags on board. Boeing designer Joe Sutter, the de facto father of the 747, said later that the double-decker 747 was a clumsy airplane that was short and stubby. Boeing would go with a single-deck 747 with a cockpit located in a hump on a second level only because it would allow a front cargo door in the design for future freighter conversions. Passengers on a second deck were only an afterthought. After all, the future of air travel surely belonged to the world of supersonic jets like the Concorde, which was under development at the time. But we're entering spoiler territory for a future video next month, so let's get back on track. In 1993, Boeing would revisit the double-decker design concept. They saw that not only Airbus and rival MD working on double-deckers, but also that air travel growth was growing rapidly across the world. More air travel means more airport congestion and limited landing slots. Those airlines needed an aircraft that could carry as many passengers as possible. Boeing predicted that this market would need a colossal 2,500 airliners with more than 350 seats between 1990 and 2005. And to be honest, they had the order book to prove it. Its 747-400 plane had got a staggering 382 orders in five years, 130 of them in 1990 alone. So Boeing got to work. There would be three different programs to create the new large aeroplane and a successor to the Boeing 747 program. They would be the VLCT, the Very Large Commercial Transport, the N650 and the LAPD, the Large Aircraft Product Development. The first project would be a joint effort across the Atlantic. Details studied of the 500 seat plus market show a demand between 400 and 500 aircraft. Not really to justify billions in development for one company, a lesson that the 747-100 development Boeing didn't want to forget. To bring this VLCT to the market, Boeing was looking at working with a European partner, or one of the companies at the time that made up the very loose firm called Airbus. This partnership worked well for a while, but eventually hit a stone wall when it became apparent that Boeing and Airbus were competing in other aircraft niches and that they butted heads on aircraft design philosophy, such as the cockpit fly-by-wire debate. Their next program, the N650, was started in 1991. It could carry 650 passengers with 18 seats across an economy. It would look very similar to what would become the Airbus A380 with a cockpit on a middle level and designed for the Asian market, where the Boeing 747 was joked as a regional jet. The last program, the LAPD, is possibly the most bizarre and truly deserves its own video. It was a long single deck monster plane dubbed the 763-241 and it was based on the C-17. The Boeing team visited Lockheed Martin and researched the layout and structure of the C-5 and spent the day crawling over the Antonov AN-124 that was visiting Seattle. And you better sit down for this part. 
The design that they came up with had a 69 foot tall tail, a 262 foot span, and a length of more than 250 feet. It would carry 450 passengers and feature sleeping berths above the seat and cabin. However, the concept had structural issues and the vast size of the tail and the height of the engines above the ground posed a significant problem for ground support. Overall, these projects came up with 100 plus different designs for the Boeing new large aeroplane. A great start, but Boeing had to choose one idea that was cheap, easy to build, and what the market wanted. With the Boeing 747-400 being its best seller yet, Boeing was inclined to follow the direction of upgrading the 747 platform and avoid the costs of a new clean sheet design. And where have we heard that one before? Boeing re-evaluated the passenger requirements down to a more 400 to 650 seater range with the upper level changing to compensate. Over three years, the team worked on the first of the 747X designs, dubbed the 747-500X, the 600X, and the 700X. They would use cutting edge tech from the Boeing 777 and have a new cockpit. The 747-500X concept featured an increased fuselage length and would carry 462 passengers up to a range of 8,700 nautical miles. The Dash 600X concept featured a greater stretch of 279 feet, with seating for 548 passengers and only a range up to 7,700 nautical miles. There was also a third study concept at the time, the 747-700X, which would have used the combined wing of the Dash 600X but with a wider fuselage, allowing it to carry up to 650 passengers over the same range as the Dash 400. These three concepts were launched in 1996, with Boeing shopping the Dash 500 and Dash 600 models to airlines with a promise to have them in the air within the next three years beating the Airbus A3XX. They were so confident that it would be a bestseller that the contracts with British Airways and United for the Dash 400 signed that year included an option to upgrade to the new models. But using all this new 777 technology proved a big gamble. Next generation technology doubled the development cost of the 747X to 5 billion US dollars and also made it no longer share commonality with previous Boeing 747s, pushing away airlines like Lufthansa who had used the 747 ex extensively. Lastly, airlines were also well aware of the new Airbus A3XX program in the works and were happy to wait until it was released. These versions of the 747X didn't get any orders, and by 1997, Boeing pulled the plug. Boeing's product strategy and marketing vice president Mike Baer said, at the time, we just could not make a business case for it. The small size of the market meant the money we would have to spend on it just didn't make sense. Flash forward to the year 2000, and Boeing reworked the Dash 400 series into the 747X, avoiding the high costs of the previous versions. There would be two versions, the 747X and the 747X Stretch. The smaller 747X aircraft was to carry 430 passengers of ranges up to 8,700 nautical miles, whilst conversely, the 747X Stretch would be extended to be 80 meters long or 263 feet and allow it to carry 500 passengers over a range of 7,800 nautical miles. Both would feature an interior based on the 777 and there would also be freighter versions of both of them. But again, with such small improvements over the 747-400 series, this plane concept didn't really win the hearts and minds and it was put back onto the back burner in favour for more outlandish concepts like the Boeing Sonic Cruiser, which you can see on this channel right here. 
From here, Boeing would focus on its twin jet business like the 777 and then the future 787. They would also flirt with a concept called the 747-400XQLR, which stands for Quiet Long Range, which had an increased range of 8,000 nautical miles over the 747, with better fuel efficiency and reduced noise. But it didn't really sound very exciting at all. In fact, you couldn't hear it, especially in a world of increased range of twin jets. All of this research was put together for a final design of the Boeing 747 in 2004, based on the 787 technology and called the 747-8. It wouldn't be a double-decker 747X, but it would have many of the technology and research effort that was used during the 747X development. And from here, the rest is history. Now, I don't want to be a conspiracy nut, but there was a comment on the last Airbus A380 design video that went into great detail of how Boeing used the 747X and new large aeroplane project as a ruse to get Airbus to commit to the A380 program. That Boeing was working so hard on their own double-decker program that Airbus had to hurry theirs out the door and beat them to the market. While this would have been brilliant if not an outrageous 4D chess move, it is rather unlikely as Boeing was spending a staggering 3 million US dollars per day on the NLA design team just to trick Airbus. But then again, maybe they were, who's to know? At the end of the day, Boeing made the right call not going ahead with the concept of the NLA and 747X. After all, the writing was on the wall that airlines wanted a plane that matched the range of the 747, but not the capacity. Airlines didn't need a bigger plane, but rather one that was more fuel efficient and had better reach across the globe. An outcome that we can see today with the success of the Boeing 787 and the unfortunate failure of the rival Airbus A380. Make no mistake, whilst I can whip up a nice video, I stand on the shoulders of giants. Much of this video research was based on the hard work of authors such as Guy Norris and Mark Wagner, aviation experts at airlines.net and secret projects, and other researchers and concept designers that are too numerous to mention. Again, I thank you for making the secret aviation history so accessible to people like me. And if you'd like to support the channel, then we have a Patreon that you can check out right here, where you can see videos early and suggested topics. And if you enjoy this video, then I suggest you subscribe and check out the other videos in the description. And as always, a like and a comment goes a long way. Thanks for watching.